SWAT trainings and expos have skyrocketed in recent years, funded largely by grants from the Department of Homeland Security through massive programs like the Urban Areas Security Initiative. More than 100 SWAT raids occur every day. But expanding resources for policing and militarization comes with a heavy price tag for those who already experience violence at the hands of law enforcement. Here is one of those stories. Peace, everybody. The same young man, the same young people I was arrested with, a year later, maybe even less than that, we're sitting in a house playing video games and we hear banging on the door. And before we know it, the door is kicked down and there's five special ops officers with their huge M16s pointed at us, three 15 year olds playing video games. And they tell us to get on the ground, they say if we move we're gonna kill them, they're like, don't look at me, we'll fucking kill you in a second, pointing their guns at us. Then they don't find anything, they let us all go, they laugh, try to joke with us, apologize, and leave out. And we're sitting there like, what just happened? We, they tear up the house, they stole money, we had to clean up the whole house for my friend before his parents got home. And those are just a couple. That's before I was 16, and this has not really stopped. It's like a continuing path of constant police and really escalation as I see my friends get older and older. Because you can see, like, as you get older, the aggression grows between how they're going to treat you. Well, I'm with an organization called Circles and Ciphers. We do restorative justice work, prison abolition work, uh, trying to build a system that can replace the one we have now. People around the country are organizing to end SWAT trainings and expos in their communities. Join the movement to end police militarization. Share your story.